the YouTube going. And so you, this will be recorded on everything that you can view later if you missed. And I'm going to talk about Dysport, Botox, Zeomin, and Revance, okay? So all these are called neuromodulators, and what they do is they improve the dynamic wrinkles. Um, so those are wrinkles that occur when you're doing movement. So the primary uh, muscle group that these are used for are, is the gabella, which is this, the frown line. Okay, I can't do it very well. I got a little disport in me. Um, other areas that you can do uh, these two are in the crow's feet, in the forehead. You can do it in the masseter area. In the masseters, it improves uh, people that have grinding or bruxism, but it also improves people that have wide faces and it makes them more slim by weakening the masseter muscles. You could also improve the downturn of the mouth uh, by putting in what's called a DAO, the depressor angularis oris, and that brings up the corners of the mouth. There are other areas that you can do it in are the neckline, and that's called the Nefertiti lip, and it lift, and it seems to give a little bit of lift along the jawline and make it uh, more defined. Uh, you could also put it in the lips, and that helps a little bit with the lip lines as well. So uh, also a brow lift. So those are the main areas. We can do a bunny, bunny lines as well, which is up here. Um, but what I want to really discuss is the differences between all these because it's kind of confusing to the consumer. So my primary go-to neuromodulator is Dysport. Okay, Dysport is uh, sold by Galderma. Um, they actually own the rights to it. Uh, it's actually an Ipsen product. But anyways, so Dysport, uh, its advantages are it's a little less uh, expensive than Botox and it kicks in sooner. So Dysport's gonna kick in between one and two days, fully kick in between five and seven days. Um, so that, that's a great advantage because uh, Botox, uh, which is the number one neuromodulator, is gonna kick in probably a little, a day or two later, day, day two, three, or four, fully kicks in day seven to 10. It's also gonna be a little bit more expensive because it's the brand name, it's the originator. And um, the other one that's on the market currently is called Zeomin, and it's uh, a MERS product, M-E-R-Z. And uh, my feeling is, is that it's an inferior product to the other two. Uh, it doesn't, it seems to be uh, erratic in its absorption and results are variable. So sometimes they last for three months, which these other two do. Sometimes it doesn't, it requires more touch-ups. So the other thing uh, that separates Dysport from Botox is that Dysport has an FDA approval to say that it lasts up to four months, whereas Botox says it can last up to three months. But that brings us to our next subject, which is uh, Revance. And Revance is a new company coming out with a new neuromodulator. It should be FDA approved late this year or early next year. And you're gonna see it on the market uh, all the studies have been very positive, so it's certainly going to get FDA approved. So the history of Revance is that it started out as a neuromodulator that was going to be applied topically. And they tried to do studies, or they did studies, along the crow's feet where they apply the cream. And they found that the results were minimal, so they had to uh, readjust their thinking, and so then they developed a injectable form of the product. And what they found is with their dosing, which it's either 20, 40, or 60 um, in the gabella, they found that their 40, milligram, or 40 uh, unit dosing actually lasted up to six months, which is a big breakthrough. Um, so if you could only go twice a year as opposed to three or four times a year, that'd be a pretty good thing. So that's where they're gonna be marketing their uh, product as a six month uh, neurotoxin or neuromodulator. Now, the, to take a little bit of edge off of that, there are some studies by Dr. Josephin, Josephin uh, about with Dysport. And he says that if you inject Dysport at a double or triple dose, 
to the normal dosing that you can get the duration of five, six months as well. So those studies aren't finalized. Those are personal communications with him. Uh, he did present it at a couple of meetings. So uh, it's possible that Dysport might actually have uh, a six month uh, duration as well, if you give it in a uh, higher dosing. The thing about Revance is that they did the, so the 20 didn't last as long, but the 40 and the 60 did. There wasn't that much difference between the 40 unit and the 60 unit, so they're recommending 40 units. I'm gonna be on a uh, ad board, uh, advisory board for Revance next week, and I'll learn a lot more about the company, but a lot of that stuff I won't be able to share with you, but, um, and I have no financial uh, connection with the company currently. I do think it's probably a good stock, RVNC, it's recommended by Golden, Goldman Sachs, and I do own that company uh, as a stock. So um, units for Dysport and Botox and Revance are all gonna be, as well as uh, Xeomin, are all kind of different. Um, Botox um, was the originator, so everyone kind of bases their units uh, theoretically on Botox, although they're not actually connected. So um, if you put in 20 units of Botox into the gabella and the frown line, a comparable dosing is approximately 50 units of Dysport, okay? But you can't take that, it's two and a half times uh, Dysport units equal, um, of Botox units equal Dysport units. It's somewhere between two and three. Um, Zeomin is, pretty close to the same units as well. I, I, and I think Revance is about the same so as, as Botox. But uh, so Dysport per unit is gonna be a lot less because you gotta multiply by two to three to get to the pricing of what an uh, equivalent unit of Botox is. Well, anyways, um, so that's about it. Uh, there is a little bit of concern in some people, and it's not a concern in my book, that Dysport migrates a little further than Botox does when you inject it. All these products do migrate approximately one centimeter uh, in diameter from the area of injection. I think that if you inject uh, and your advanced injector, that you, I have had no problems with uh, diffusion with this port and the reason why it theoretically can diffuse further is because it's um, associated pro the protein uh, complex with this port is a little smaller and they feel that it could migrate a little bit further because it's smaller but the active ingredient is the same for all of these products what happens is is there's a protein and there's an active ingredient the active ingredient is associated with this protein. It gets cleaved rather quickly by the body and or when you add uh, water to mix it up, to reconstitute it. So um, there's, there's different theories as to why this port kicks in sooner than Botox, but there's really nothing to substantiate why it does because everyone says if the active ingredient is the same, why should it kick in sooner? Um, it does. There's no doubt in my uh, eight to 10 years of using Dysport, it definitely kicks in sooner, between one and two days. Some days, some studies have shown even within six hours, you can measure that the Dysport has kicked in. So, oh, one other area that this is used in frequently in my office is in the underarm area for hyperhidrosis. You can also use it on, in the hands. And uh, it's great for that. It's gonna give you three to six months worth of improvements. And if you repeat it, it's gonna give you even longer improvements. So what we're gonna do right now is uh, we're gonna use my favorite neuromodulator, which is Dysport. And this young female here, she's, she's a weightlifter. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and she uses her frown line, her gabella, very frequently. So see, she's not, she's not quite fully um, resolved her prior dosing but we're gonna inject that today. Now she does have some lines in her forehead, but when you do inject the gabella area, which is five points, a lot of it diffuses, and people with small foreheads often don't need to include their forehead because this injection travels that way. So in her, I've uh, 
drawn up 60 units. Uh, I, so my dosing, you can lean your head back. My dosing for disport, and I want you to zoom in when I inject. My dosing for disport in the Gabella area is anywhere from 40 to 70. And uh, with people with strong ones, you obviously need more. Okay, let me center you a little bit. Okay, so the first area you inject is the Proceris, and I give 10 units there. This is a dilution or uh, reconstitution is a better word for it, of 1.5 cc's of saline to 300 units of disport. And then up here, I'm gonna give a little bit more. So I'm gonna give 15. And I'm gonna give another 15 right over here. I'll bring it down a little bit so you, you guys can film it a little easier. And this is called the medial corrugator. And then the lateral corrugator is over here. So the medial corrugator is a deep injection as well as the Proceris. The lateral corrugator is a superficial injection. You need to stay at least a centimeter above the orbital rim, usually in the mid pupillary line. So let's see a squeeze. Okay, so you can see that it pulls from about right here and the lateral corrugator does interdigitate with the skin. So you inject, and I always do this in an upward fashion and I push the skin onto the needle and that seems to be more comfortable and I inject, okay? And if you do this right, there should be minimal to no bleeding. And now I go over here, here's the orbital rim, here's about a centimeter and I'm injecting right into the skin and I do it slowly. And what you'll notice is that there are little bumps and those bumps will gradually subside in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And you won't notice that she had anything done after that. So, my so after this procedure, I have some rules you need to follow. The rules are no hot tub jacuzzis or saunas um, or working out. All those things are gonna cause a little bit of swelling and increase circulation in the area and it's potential that those spread the product. Also, don't lay yourself in a horseshoe like getting a massage because that could press on the product and disperse it as well. Um, also, don't manipulate the areas. I also tell people not to wear a hat. All that can just move the product. So how long after this can she have like a laser? Um, it's probably best to have it uh, three to seven days after you have the Botox because even though the product is absorbed in approximately four hours, I, I've had a case where uh, 24 hours later I did a laser and it did disperse the product a little bit. And there's nothing you can do if the product gets dispersed to correct it. Um, you, you, so you can't have a laser or radio frequency or anything that cause swelling on the same day. Uh, but you could have chemical peels, you could have fillers, uh, you could have some laser treatments, not ones that cause significant swelling like a Frax or laser resurfacing. But if you're just doing um, vessels or something like with the XLV laser, that's fine. Um, or a very superficial uh, laser peel, that's fine. It's the swelling that causes the dispersion of the product. So that's about it. Um, the differences between the products. So um, Botox is gonna kick in a little longer than Dysport. Dysport's gonna kick in sooner, maybe last a little bit longer. Dysport's gonna be a little less expensive. I use Dysport versus Botox, so probably 80% versus 20%. Uh, Zeomin I don't use in my office. It, it just is too e erratic. And uh, Revance, it's coming. Um, the promise is six months, we'll see. And I don't know exactly what the pricing will be. Uh, it definitely won't be twice the price. It will be somewhere probably in between your current and, and, and less than twice. So, so you, I think it's convenient to do it less than uh, three or four times a year. We will see. Um, but keep it on your radar screen. It should come out in early 2019. So that's Dr. Weiner for the Aesthetic Half Hour. Thank you.